how to photograph a Christmas tree. My name is Wolf Amri, Wolf.Amri on Instagram, and in this video I will get you from this Christmas tree image to that Christmas tree image, or even one with people. And we will even take a smartphone shot without noise. Let's face it, you have photographed your Christmas tree in recent years and at best got these results. Let's change that. Before we even get to the camera settings, let me show you maybe the most important thing when it comes to Christmas tree photography, Christmas tree lights. As almost always in photography, more light is better. One string of Christmas tree lights will only get you half the light that two strings will get you, a quarter of the light that four strings will give you, and one eighth that eight strings will get you. That's pretty logical. For shots without people, that's no problem, and you can easily adjust the camera settings and still get a great shot. But when we take images with people later in the video, using eight lights instead of one will get you from ISO 12800 down to ISO 1600. And that will make a massive difference in regard to ISO noise. Let me zoom into these images to show you how much. If you don't understand ISO yet, I will link you to our photography course on this channel at the end of the video. So before we get into details, for really great Christmas tree images, particularly with people, you need to get more lights. I will link you to the type we use in the description. Those are affiliate links, by the way, so if you use them, even for purchasing your Christmas tree presents, you will help me create more videos. And it wouldn't cost you a single cent. Now that we got that out of the way, it is about time to get to the photography-related stuff. First, if you have a tripod, this is the time to use it. If you don't have a tripod, place your camera on something solid. That could be a chair, a table, or a pile of books. For convenience, I will use a tripod. No matter if tripod or not, since we're going to use rather long shutter speeds, you don't want to touch your camera while it takes the image. That might create some motion blur. So set your camera to two second self timer to avoid that. I will use three cameras today, an entry-level Canon T7i, my Sony A7R2, and later even a smartphone. First, you want to turn off the flash. Photographing Christmas trees with flash is a highly advanced topic and requires gel filters and other stuff that I may cover in another video. If you use flash without those tricks, it will completely overpower your Christmas tree lights and also add a white bluish color cast to your warm images. And we will change to manual exposure. Don't worry if you're not familiar with it, just follow my instructions. And if you have questions, you guessed it, ask them in the comments. Next, my primary setting for the images without people. You surely watched our photography course, so you know by now that our main goal for non-moving subjects is the best possible image quality. So we will first set the ISO to 100 to avoid noise. What is our second most important setting? Nothing moves, we don't have to freeze any motion, so we don't really have to worry about shutter speed. And that means Aperture is our second most important camera setting for Christmas tree images without people. Keep that in mind, we will have different settings when we later add your family to the images. In my experience, the best possible image with the lens I used on the Sony a7R2 is f5.6. But let me encourage you to experiment. Usually, I would choose f22 to create a star effect on every LED. But that doesn't work with every lens. Compare f5.6 to f22 when zoomed in. Did you also see the difference in sharpness? That blur at very high f numbers is well known in photography and is called diffraction. Now let me just show you how different the Canon T7i with the kit lens renders the image. Look at the stars at f22. When we zoom in, the sharpness difference between f5.6 and f22 on this lens 
is just as bad as on the other lens. But for a rather small Christmas card, I'd still be willing to sacrifice that loss of sharpness for that nice star effect on the T7i. So experiment with the aperture, take quite a few shots, and when you check your images on the computer, you can later decide which one you like best. Okay, so we set ISO and aperture. We have one camera setting left, shutter speed. Which one are we going to use? Well, that depends on the number of lights you have. The more strings, the faster your shutter speed will be. For my image with one string, I chose 15 seconds, while for the image with eight strings, I chose two seconds. I'd recommend checking your display and adapting the shutter speed so that the image looks good. If you're not sure, why not take a series of shots? You have all the time in the world, so use this opportunity and just experiment. Your camera very, very likely even has a so-called bracketing or HDR function. Try that to even out highlights and shadows, particularly in entry-level cameras that sometimes have issues with noise. Talking about trying, why not create a series of images? Some closer, some wider, maybe even put some props up to create images for the easiest Christmas card or for next year. What about images with great bokeh? Check out our video, The Five Factors of Background Blur to help you these kind of shots. By the way, don't forget to tag me at wolf.amri on Instagram. I'd really love to see your Christmas tree images. On a side note, you may have noticed that my images are pretty yellowish. I could of course change that by changing the white balance in my camera or later in my editing software. But personally, I like it that way because the LED lights are supposed to represent candles. Well, and candles have a very warm light. Before we next get to the people shots, let's try to get some smartphone images of our Christmas tree. If you don't have a dedicated tripod for your smartphone, use a box and rubber band and place it on a chair. In regard to the settings, don't, let me repeat that, don't use the auto mode of your smartphone. That will create an awful lot of noise. Instead, rather use an app that will let you manually set first the white balance, then ISO, you want the lowest possible setting, next shutter speed, that needs to be rather long, but maybe not as long as you might expect. Drag it until the brightness of your preview looks good. Then, just like with the big camera, use the self-timer to not touch the smartphone while it takes the image. I bet you will be surprised about the image quality of your smartphone if you take control over your camera. Okay, so much for the images without people. Now, if you add your family, you will introduce an issue. People tend to move and therefore create motion blur in your shot. If your shutter speed is too long. So our primary setting changes from ISO to shutter speed. Some of you might be surprised, but I will set the shutter speed pretty low, 1 30th of a second. That might result in some images being blurred. Do I care? Not really, because I will take many, many shots. Some of them will be blurred, but in fact, all I need to make me happy is one single great image. Why do I need to set the shutter speed that low? Because despite the many lights on our Christmas tree, the general amount of light is still very low compared to, for example, outdoor shots in daylight. So setting the shutter speed that low will help me keep ISO under control. But before we get to ISO, I will set aperture. I usually set it to the lowest value my lens supports. Will that give me the best possible sharpness? No. Might that result in one of the faces being slightly out of focus? Maybe. But having a limited amount of light available means I have to make compromises. For me, ISO noise is more distracting than one of the faces being slightly out of focus. And if you take care that the faces are all in one plane, that might not even happen. And talking about ISO, I bring it up just as much so that the image looks good again on my display. 
You could also use the histogram for this image, making sure it slightly touches the right side. More on the histogram in a separate video. However, don't be afraid to raise ISO. You have done everything you could to avoid it and have no other choice. So that is your only chance to get the shot. Before we finally add some people, can you see that we get the same image brightness that we got before, just with different settings? Amazing, no? We avoided noise in the first image by using a long shutter speed, but we can't use the long shutter speed in this image, so we have to live with noise. Now I could set the camera to 10 second self timer, press the shutter button, and run to take my place and get a single shot. Or I use my smartphone remote, set the self timer to 2 seconds, press the button, hide the smartphone, and smile into the camera. Even better if your camera or app supports that function would be to do a series of images, like 10 images with an interval of 3 to 5 seconds. Many don't though, so let me introduce you to a rather cheap remote timer. Links again down in the description. You can set a delay so that you can comfortably take your place before it starts, an interval in between your shots so that you can make different poses, and a fixed number of images so that the sequence will stop after, for example, 20 shots. Then you press start, run over to the set and start posing. One thing to keep in mind, freeze while the camera takes the image to avoid motion blur. And that's it, here is my favorite image. Back to white balance again, if you don't like the color cast, you could always convert the images to black and white, either in your editing software or in your camera. How could we even further improve our shots? We could use flash as a fill light or use our room lights and filter them with gel filters. Let me know if you are interested in a part two of this series.